right, we're here at Elmcrest Farm with Park Ferguson, who's going to walk us through the harvesting process of on-farm pastured poultry. Park, we've been to Eric Blend's farm, a uh, blended homestead, and he showed us, walked us through his fields with his flock. But tell us a little bit more about the process, taking them off the field and putting them through the processing process. So uh, we wait till they're about seven or eight weeks of age, and just depending on the time of year, uh, you know, we make a decision of you know when we think they're ready. Um, what we do here, we uh, load them up on a stock trailer, or maybe put them in dog crates or something, and, and get them up here to the house where we have water and electric and all that, and then we uh, do them in our garage. And today we've rented a mobile poultry processing unit uh, that has all the equipment that you need mounted in place. Uh, it's portable, uh, so it's, it's really nice to have that. So Park, you mentioned you use a mobile processing trailer. Tell us about that. How do you come up with that? The West Virginia Farmers Market Association has the trailers uh, that are available for rent. Um, we contact Terry Hudson, he's in Charleston. Uh, he's a well-known uh, farmer of, of produce and uh, some poultry and other products. And uh, we reach out to him and he allows us to rent it uh, at a cost of $15 per day. <laughs> We are here at Elmcrest Farm for Poultry Processing Day. This is Park Ferguson. He's going to walk us through the process of pastured poultry harvesting. Okay. So, uh, as far as processing, the first thing you want to, the first step is the kill cones, and uh, basically what we do, you stuff them in there upside down. Uh, you kind of fish around and find their heads and then with a the knife people have different techniques i just make a good slice uh, right above the their jawbone there and that'll cut the jugular and uh, they'll bleed out within a minute or two from the kill cones they go into the scalder it's a hot water bath uh, somewhere between 140 150 degrees and it loosens their feathers uh, this this thing has some uh, baskets that rotate to turn them. You could also use like a turkey fryer at home and just dump them. Uh, it's important that they move around so that the water gets down to where their feathers, you know, meet their skin and loosen them up. So anywhere between 30 and uh, 60 seconds in here. This has an automatic timer, so I've got it set on one minute. Our temp is about 145. Uh, that seems to be working today. It's a little cooler outside has stopped and quit spinning. Uh, we just want to check them real quick and pull some wing feathers, which are their tougher feathers. If they come out pretty easily, then they're ready to go into the plucker. This big plucker can hold four at a time. Uh, it tends to, to do well with these ones. So we're going to turn it on, let it spin, and turn off the water. So you can see they're uh, they're pretty good and clean. Uh, you know, there's still a few feathers left. Uh, we designate a person to further clean them. Uh, today, Jeannie is on that job, and she just picks out the last little bit of feathers and makes them look perfect. All right. Next step, we're here with Jamie Ferguson, the lead eviscerator at Elmcrest Poultry Production. He's going to walk us through how to break down the chicken or how to eviscerate the chicken. So walk us through the process, Jamie. You just... Okay. First, uh, I took the feet off of it and very simply just rock back on them and you, they just cut right off. Next, I'm gonna go up and work on the crop and the esophagus a little bit, which will make the removal of the entrails 
uh, easier. Just gonna do a couple of cuts here to loosen some of this stuff up so that whenever I pull from the rear, uh, it pretty much comes out. There is a cavity between the throat and the breast that you're gonna make a little hole in. Next, I come to the rear of the chicken about an inch below the breastplate. I'm gonna make a slight cut through the skin. You wanna be careful now. Here's where you really gotta be careful and keep clean. Not to go too deep because you might nick uh, part of the intestines and uh, get a product that you don't really want in your chicken. Okay, there we've made a cut, okay? I am going to stick my hand clear back up into the chest cavity underneath the breast and I'm feeling for the heart. Once I reach the heart, that gives me a little bit of something to hold on to, to pull. Here, come, the organs. here comes the esophagus. Okay. There's the guts. And the ideal way to do this is get everything out of the body and not have any fluids from the intestines or any of the other um, organs in the body. I'm going to come back here right above the tail. Here's the chicken's rear end. I'm going to cut down through, right above the tail, above the butt, and pull that all, all out in one piece. All right, wow, it's there clean. You, there you have a bird that the entrails were removed. I can still see part of the esophagus. Next thing I'm after is the lungs, and you just gotta go in and kinda fish those out with your fingers. There's a okay. lung. And they make tools for that too. Some people use the lung scrapers, not necessarily okay. essential. There's right. a bird that All has right. had its entrails removed. I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna work on the front end a little bit. Try to get the rest of the crop and the esophagus out. I can see it here. And just, you're just kind of pulling on it. You may need a knife to loosen it. Kind of sticks to the underside of the skin, huh? But there comes the crop, and here comes the esophagus or the trachea, whatever, up to the head. Boom. Next thing I'm going to do is remove the head very simply by breaking the neck, cutting the skin, the head just comes right off. Great. All right, there's your bird. Probably takes three to five minutes to cut one. Right. Next step is I'm going to take him over to uh, fresh water, rinse it good. Mm -hmm. Then he's going into a cold water bath for about 30 minutes. And then from the cold water bath, you're going to go into a ice cooler with more ice uh, to really chill the, uh, chill the bird down. Obviously, it's not a fun job cutting these things heads off. Uh, it's not really something that I enjoy. But the way that I feel about it is if you're going to eat meat, that you should take part in the process. And compared to the way that these things are raised on an industrial scale, we do it in a way uh, that gives back to the ground that they're on. They, they have a healthier and happier life. Uh, they eat grass, they eat bugs. It fertilizes the ground, you know, rather than having a negative environmental impact. And then none of their guts, none of their feathers, none of their blood goes to waste. Uh, we use that to mix it with carbon, wood chips or something. and. Uh, make compost out of it. So every step in this process is kind of goes back to feed another cycle uh, that we utilize later down the road. So this series is geared toward folks who are home, currently homesteading or get, looking into getting into homesteading. Um, speak to someone who has interest in this but has never done it before. Is this more of an entry level thing? Should you have some experience? Where can you get experience? I think it's profitable, number one, uh, you know, at any scale. It's, it's, you know, we raise these, we raise chickens because we like to eat chicken, number one. Uh, now we raise enough for us to eat and enough that we can sell them and recoup our costs and have a little extra income from them. Uh, so pasture poultry, you know, if you do the math, uh, it, it is a profitable thing. 
Uh, they're, they cost a little more than what you'd find at the store, uh, but once your customers try them and you build that customer base, you'll find that you'll have very loyal customers because it's just such a higher quality product uh, than what anyone else you know, can get from, from any grocery store. Um, go ahead. So speak to the customer for a second. If, if I'm someone who's been, you know, traditionally buying most of my meat at the grocery store, uh, but I'm interested in buying a local chicken, um, is it going to taste different? Is it going to look different? Am I going to have to do anything extra before I cook it like I normally would? What's the difference? The difference is that these are raised on pasture and they've had a more bigger variety of forage uh, from clover and bugs and grass um, where store-bought chickens typically don't. Um, everyone I've talked to, especially you know more elderly people, uh, they say this is what chicken used to taste like. This tastes like the chicken my grandma made you know on, on Sunday for Sunday dinner. Um, so it you know they say everything in the world tastes like chicken but until you experience these, you don't know what chicken really tastes like.